Michael Scott, Scotty Man Photo. I'm here at Carter Caves in Eastern Kentucky. I've been wanting to make this trip for some time and had an opportunity to stop in and spend the day at Carter Caves, so I thought I'd come down and try to capture some images of, of some natural bridges that, that I've seen many times, but I never really photographed. Carter Caves is an amazing place. It's quite beautiful here. It's as country as country can be. And truly, that's one of the most attractive things about Carter Caves. To get you away from the, the hustle and bustle of city life and back in the country. It's a lush green forest. And I think uh, any opportunity that I can get to, to get to these areas, I certainly want to take advantage of. But here I am, and with a goal of capturing images at Fern Bridge and Raven Bridge and maybe even Smoky Bridge, depending, depending on the conditions. I've also had my, uh, my eyes set on another location by Laurel Cave. It's a little waterfall that I've passed by many times and always wanted to photograph, but you know, I never really could figure out a good composition for it. But I'm going to give it a whirl this time and see what I can do. Honestly, I think it's going to be a difficult composition to compose. And the conditions have to be right, too. Well, I'm on the Three Bridges Trail, and I have to say, this trail doesn't disappoint. It's certainly one of the better trails I've been on. This trail is absolutely magnificent. There's nothing boring about this hike. Beautiful scenery, the lush forest, and nothing beats an early morning. I've hiked this trail at different times, but I can honestly say the best time is in the morning. And it is absolutely stunning in the mornings. I often talk about being one with nature, and and these early morning hikes certainly give me an opportunity to do just that. I must say, it's quite the experience being out here alone. Standing in the center of Fern Bridge certainly has a way of making one feel small. I truly realize what a powerful place this is. Very majestic. I truly do value these moments. Capturing images and just to try to do justice to the scene and to truly represent what I'm actually seeing and feeling. It's difficult to do sometimes, but but other times it's easy. But nevertheless, I really enjoy moments like this. It really doesn't matter if I capture an image or not, but what does matter is that I enjoy myself and, and I'm really off to a good start so far. Well, I would say that uh, no image that I could capture, I, I think, could encapsulate the the experience of being here and seeing Fern Arch. I think it's just magnificent. It's one of nature's uh, greatest creations. Now, I don't like the uh, the bridge. I, I think they could have done without the bridge. I think it just adds a man-made element to an otherwise really natural beautiful scene but uh but anyway um the, the trail is very well maintained uh i mean there's obviously a lot of work that's went into carter caves here and in, in, in keeping this resort uh open and looking good so very very pleased with that to see that i haven't been here and uh I, I mean it's been a few years so but man it's beautiful and peaceful and just a wonderful hike this morning just awesome Uh, another thing I would say is, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of fascination with mirrorless cameras now, and uh, and I have a mirrorless camera. I, I like a mirrorless camera too, but but um, I really prefer the viewfinder, and as opposed to the electronic viewfinder, I like an optical viewfinder, not an electronic viewfinder. And I think um, the reason for that is is composing the image. I like to compose my image in a viewfinder, and I'm not sure why that is. I, I mean, simply put, I know why it is. I prefer it because it, it looks better. It looks more natural. Uh, it's like I'm looking at it with, with the naked eye as opposed to on a screen or in an electronic viewfinder, an electronic representation of reality. In a DSLR, you're simply viewing the, the image through a, a, a mirror and a prism and, and you're, it's like looking at it with your eyes or through glasses. I mean, you're actually seeing the image, but 
But to me, composing the image in the viewfinder is, it's just, I get way better results as opposed to composing the image on an LCD or an electronic viewfinder. So I like to look through the viewfinder when I compose my image. Um, I've, and maybe that's because, um, you know, that, that's the era in which I grew up. You know, you, you had a camera, it had a viewfinder, it's an optical viewfinder, and you looked through the optical viewfinder. And uh, when the electronic viewfinder started coming out, and uh, I just, I wasn't big on that. So um, I just, just wasn't big on it at all. So I, I like looking through the optical viewfinder, and I suspect I always will. So, but, um, so that's probably why I will never say never, but it's probably why I won't go with a, uh, a mirrorless camera. Although mirrorless has its advantages, I, I still prefer that optical viewfinder. And, uh, and I really like it. Maybe they'll come out with some kind of hybrid in the future, who knows. You know, I'm, I'm often asked, what's my goal when I come out? And I think, above all, my goal is to capture an image that truly represents, that truly brings the viewer of this image into the scene where I was when I captured the image. It's, it's to capture an image of the scene that, that does justice to it, that, um, that really kind of encapsulates the, uh, the moment, the beauty of the scene, where you put the viewer in, in the, through the frame and into the scene, and the viewer of the image says, wow, that's a magnificent place. How did you get that image? Where, uh, where do I go to see that place? I think that's when you know that's when you know that uh, you, you've done justice in, in representing the scene by your image. I'm gonna try to capture this composition and uh, on this hillside, a little bit tricky, but, but I really like this comp. Um, I'm not sure if the dy dynamic range is gonna be a bit much, but I, I don't think so. I think it'll be all right. There's some cloud coverage. So I just kind of wait for the right moment. I don't know if I can pull this off. It's a, this is a very chaotic scene. They're just, uh, there's interesting objects all in the frame, but, but there's too many. 
things just uh, clutter up the scene. It's just a lot to, to kind of cram into a photograph. So I don't know, I gotta get the right composition or I may not have an image here, so. I think it's an okay composition, but the true tell is, of course, when you get it back in post-processing, so we'll see. Well, I considered shooting it from the top, but uh, it's just very chaotic. I mean, there are just a lot of green plants, branches everywhere. Mm, I just don't think... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's too chaotic. I'm just gonna pass on it. Maybe some other time though, maybe some other time. But uh, anyway, hopefully the image I took out, took down below will turn out to be something decent. But uh, that was an incredibly hard, um, hard image to capture. And certainly, certainly wasn't able to compose it like I really wanted it with the, with the trees kind of doing the framing for me, but uh, it really turned out to be more of a distraction than anything. But we'll see in post what those, uh, what those look like. All right, uh, I guess I'll head on down the trail. This was a really difficult image to compose, and although it didn't come out like I really wanted, I think it's okay. And uh, yeah, I might return again and try to recapture it. If you've never been to Carter Caves, it's a it's a well kept little secret. To be honest with you, I mean it's near Olive Hill, Kentucky, and that's where I'm from, by the way. But uh, there's not a lot there, and so I think a lot of uh, a lot of people outside the community miss this opportunity to see these these magnificent formations, tour these caves. It's a great campground too. I got sidetracked looking around at all the beauty. Missed my uh, connector. Yeah, I hiked all the way around that uh, ridge there uh, to the other side before I realized I missed my this is my turn. Man, as far as trails go, these trails are just amazing. I mean, they're just filled with uh, all kinds of beautiful stops and sights. And it's just really a really good hike. If you're, if you're an outdoors enthusiast and you like hiking, you would not be wrong stopping here. This is just magnificent. Looks like they got a new bridge. Yeah, the lodge is right there. So you could be on your way to a certain place, passing by I-64 uh, near Olive Hill, take the, take the exit to Carter Caves, stay at the Caveland Lodge, 
and hit the and just walk out your door in the morning and hit the trail and you're you're right here and it's uh, about a three and a quarter mile as you can see hike so round trip if you want to stop off at some of the uh, you know raven rocks a little bit of a detour but um you can still hit raven rock and fern bridge and uh yeah yeah good uh, good to know in case you're passing by Well, this is uh, Smoky Bridge. I've been here many times. It's uh, when I was younger and many times as an adult too. So uh, it's a beautiful place. Something very calming about it. I actually captured an image here once. Uh, it's not one of my better images, but uh, I think it was okay. Had a nice root uh, leading line. I'll show that right here. I don't think I'll be photographing today. Looks like everything's kind of, I really don't like how the the bottom is kind of washed out and i think i'll just move on just really enjoying this hike Now that's it, I'm back at the starting point at the trailhead. 3.2 miles overall, just a great hike, very scenic. I really enjoyed shooting the uh, bridges. We'll see how those turned out. So I've uh, got a couple other things uh, lined up here I wanna check out. And uh, I'm gonna go to, uh, check out this waterfall I got in mind and kind of see what that's uh, all about. I, I don't think there's gonna be any flowing water, but uh, nevertheless, I'll, I'll take a look anyway. All right, more to follow. Laurel Cave is actually a pretty impressive cave. I've actually been back here a few times, been back inside. Down, there's a lower level, upper level. You can climb in some chambers. It's actually pretty spectacular. Uh, you gotta have a permit to get in there though, but the permit's no big deal. You just basically go down to the, uh, to the office and um, just tell, they put your name on a list, but they, the reason for the permit is so they know you're in there. But uh, yeah, it's no big deal to get one. But I uh, don't plan on doing any cave crawls today. Maybe in the future, though. I just thought I'd show you Laurel Cave. It's a, it's a great little stop. And uh, conveniently located by the road. So you can just kind of pull off and jump right out here and tour a cave, as long as you go get a permit. The real reason I stopped by here was because the little waterfall I mentioned earlier is down this way. And that's really what I wanted to check out. So, you can kind of see it as, as I walk up to it here. Basically coming from there. And uh, that's what I need to see. I need to get up there closer. I don't know if there's gonna be a photo opportunity here or not. Yeah, this, is, this waterfall's actually, I say waterfall, but it's more like a cave 
outlet. Um, I can get up here and kind of show it to you. It's like a little cascading waterfall. That's actually not a bad composition right there. But it is very cluttered and chaotic. This is interesting. I, I think I'm going to photograph this. Uh, who knows? Maybe it'll work out better than I had thought. Let's go back to the car and grab my gear. see two compositions here one is closer in and I'm thinking I'll go wide and capture the falls with some of the surrounding cavern um, to just kind of give you the same ambiance that, that I have here the same the same feeling and uh, the other one it's kind of right here with a leading line and maybe using this boulder right here uh, in the foreground but the leading lines of the flowing water and I think I can slow that down a few seconds and really provide a nice kind of path here anyway that's my thinking so I'll probably capture two images here and then maybe further in with a little bit wider angle yeah you know the the big boulder is it's a distraction I can't figure out how to work it in the composition and still have a balanced composition. So I think I'm gonna to try to eliminate it in, in, uh, in this image. You know, height is something else to consider. A lot, all too many times, the photographer just kind of walks up and just at eye level and shoot and just kind of raising up and down and moving you'll find new perspectives things change so the the waterfalls has kind of a stepping um, level to it it just kind of cascades down and getting down too low just like an accordion kind of pushes the accordion back together and and takes away from the, the different level different elevations of the of the waterfall so I need the height to stretch out the accordion, if that makes sense. And this, this available light might work to my advantage, but it's kind of partly cloudy, so whether it does or doesn't, I think it's just a matter of timing it in the right moment when the cloud's over or when, when I can use the light. So. Well, one of the things I, I think people do is they, they pull out their iPhones and they'll, they'll shoot the iPhone in kind of a portrait position, just natural, because that's the way we have our iPhones in our hands or other phones. But um, with the camera, it tends to be the opposite. We just simply are used to holding the camera like this and snapping a picture. And all I'm saying is don't be afraid to get that camera up and tilt it up Try, try portrait, try ver uh, horizontal, try different, not angled, but not an angled fan, more natural look, but try different perspectives and aspect ratios. I'm actually looking at this as a 5-4 portrait orientation. So some clipping right there, which should be no problem. 
and that's about as far as I can go without clipping anything else. It's really, really white. I think I can balance out the, the rest of the exposure in Photoshop or Lightroom. And that's using this graduated neutral density filter upside down, as you can see. Well, maybe you can't see it, but anyway, the dark side's down here. All right, well, that's out of the way. I'm going to go on into the cavern here and take a, a closer image, a wider angle of this uh, top-level waterfall here. So I actually shot one more uh, of this image, and I used a, a three-stop reverse neutral density filter, a, a reverse grad neutral density filter. I wouldn't have this filter, really, in my kit if it wasn't for... For Glenn at Sniper Photography. Thanks, Glenn. Again, this thing has, has proved itself extremely valuable. It worked so much better than the regular transition reverse grad. Uh, it just really, the, the light spot, it really allowed me to darken that down. And uh, you know, I'll just kind of show you, maybe you can see the difference here. Yeah, I captured three, three exposures there. And um, very, very balanced between the lights and the darks very balanced as you can see and i get to the other image and it's very white down here as opposed to the top side so the reverse grad really just gave me a more balanced overall composition a more balanced exposure i mean so i really think that's gonna i really think that's gonna work Thanks again, Glenn. Well, on this second composition, I actually couldn't get in as far as I wanted to, really. It started getting slippery, so um, yeah. I, so I had to back off a little bit. So I ended up shooting this at about 28 millimeter. So, uh, which I think is fine. And I'm just trying to time the lighting as the clouds come and go. Uh, to really get the, I'm at ISO 200 and about two seconds if, if I can time the lighting right to where the, the cavern just kind of fills up with light as the clouds uncover uh, the sun and that gives me about two seconds. Without that, I'm really at about 15 seconds. So I'm really trying to time that. And because I'm 28 millimeters, I want to make sure this thing is just perfectly sharp from foreground to background. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to capture two exposures and I need those exposures to be as close as possible um, to each other. So at a two second exposure, I should be able to get that. Anyway. Well, all right, I guess that's it. I captured several uh, images. All in all, about three different compositions and, uh, and stacked uh, most of them. So uh, I really just want the foreground and background to be pin sharp. So a lot of uh, kind of playing with the light today. Yeah, interesting. Uh, all in all, it's been a good trip. Uh, I really enjoyed Carter Caves. Uh, I hope the uh, I hope the natural bridges come out, and I hope the waterfalls here comes out, and, and I bagged a couple of good images. But uh, you know, even if you don't, still a good trip. I'm gonna I'm gonna head up the. Uh, the park here and find me a, a nice spot put up my hammock and kick back and relax for a little while so i guess that's it i'll go ahead and call it i'm going to end the video but uh if you like the video make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing and drop me a comment let me know what you thought about the video and as always if i don't see you down the road maybe i'll see you on the trail or in a cave composition of this image, but I don't think I'd quite pulled it off. I think the, the focal length is, is wrong and, and it really lacks depth and um, just seems like the compression of the image just didn't really quite cut it.
On the other hand, I really like this composition. I like the textures in the image and the tones, the slight changes in color. Just really, um, really pull me in. So I, I definitely think this one's a keeper.